Hi, I'm David. Hi, I'm Connor. Welcome to the Offline Conversion Tracking Academy. We're very excited to be hosting you here over the next 10 days to help you on your way to getting offline conversion tracking implemented for your business. Fantastic. Now we know we want to get we want to get started. But before we do that, let's just run through how this is going to work. Small bit of housekeeping. Yeah, we could say that. So, as I said, this will be a competitive time trial. Um, so who will be the first person to implement and complete the OCT Academy? When you have gone through each of the stages, make sure to keep your account manager um, informed and updated on how you're getting on. Um, and remember that the fastest team will win. Um, those of you who do complete it and do complete it in the fastest time will be in line for a prize. To be confirmed. Yes. To be confirmed. Jury's still out. Yeah, jury's still out. But there are there were some exciting things announced at the uh, at, at the Google product launch. So um, keep an eye out for that. And finally, and most importantly, there will be technical expert support throughout <clears throat> this uh, process. So if, for example, you need help on some, some of the tagging elements, you will have a member of our tag team available specifically to you. So within your information pack, you will have um, um, an email address for a, for, for a technical specialist to help out with any of the, with any of the elements. Um, aside from that, if you do need some API support, reach out to your, reach out to your account manager and they'll, they'll help you through that as well. Now, throughout this session, we do understand that some elements, some elements of it will be quite technical and there will be a live Q&A session. So down below the video, there's a link. And um, if you click into that, you can, uh, you can type in any questions and we'll be updating, not ourselves, because obviously we're talking at the moment, right um, but there will be people on hand to respond to questions um, as and when you need them. So do fire away with any questions. Fantastic. Now, over to you. Thank you very much, Connor. So we all know that lead gen advertisers now want to start improving the quality without necessarily sacrificing lead volume. So a recent study has shown that over 70% of lead gen marketers actually cite improving lead quality as their most important objective. However, we also see that 55% of this audience actually also want to increase the volume of leads. So this is kind of a new phenomenon that we're seeing that people are looking away from it purely being about the quantity of leads that they're driving and now they actually want to go ahead and start improving the overall quality of this leads. And this is how we are going to help you achieve that true offline conversion tracking. Now today, we're gonna to be bringing you through the entire process for implementing uh, the offline conversion tracking solution. And I do want to add as well, in a couple of weeks time, we will be also bringing everybody who has completed stage one, which is the import stage, um, through how to actually optimize towards these conversions. So how do we actually increase the overall number of high quality conversions? Um, and that's going to be in a couple of weeks' time in another yeah. webinar. And as Dave always says, if you don't measure it, you can't improve it. So that's the, the aim of the game. I do always say that. Yeah. Um, excellent. So the better way, the better better, better measurement <laughs> is the fastest way to improve overall lead quality. Um, so let me just give you a quick example of what this looks like. For instance, if we had a few bad measurement signals, so for example, we are tracking simply just the leads that are coming through from our web page. Now, in this case, we have some low quality leads, and then we go ahead and we increase the volume of these low quality leads, and what do we end up with? More low quality leads. Very good, Connor, you're listening. Okay, now if we look at improving the overall <laughs> measurement signals, or if we look at actually just enhancing these measurement signals, and then we have some good quality leads and we increase the volume of these good quality leads. What do we get then? <laughs> we end up with more, more good, good quality, quality leads. leads. Thank you very much. Um, so that's exactly what we're looking to do today. Now, this also beckons the question, what do we measure? So with Google Ads, we can actually measure a lot of different things. So at the very top of our measurement funnel, where we can actually look at measuring engaged visitors, uh, we can do this using the uh, G tag or using the Google Ads conversion tracking tag. And we can measure pages visited, newsletter signups, brochure downloads, um, all of these things which are measuring kind of very early signs of awareness and engagement. 
Now, as we move down this measurement funnel and we increase the user intent, we can start measuring leads. And we can also do this using the same conversion tracking uh, tag that we use for engaged visitors. So here we can actually measure phone calls and form submissions. So this is great. We can start measuring people who are calling through from our website <clears throat> and even people who are filling out the lead form on our website. So again, all of this can be done with online conversion tracking. Um, but in the case of lead gen businesses, what happens then when we've measured the form on the website? Uh, so that's what essentially we're optimizing towards, but we know that that isn't the end of the user journey, right? So what happens after this is the form uh, gets filled out by a user, it goes to your business, gets delivered into your CRM, and then your sales team ultimately work that lead. What's happening is Google Ads is losing sight of all of that great work that's happening inside the business and all of the important events that could be tracked there. These events are the offline events, for instance, the qualified leads, so where your marketing or your sales teams are actually reaching out to users and qualifying those leads. Also, in a lot of cases, closed deals aren't actually measurable. Uh, whereby the sales team is actually picking up the phone or in person um, selling the product or service and actually closing the deal. So the last two here at the bottom of our measurement funnel where we see the highest amount of commercial intent with users, these qualified leads and also measuring buyers, th these are actions that we can actually look to measure with offline conversion tracking. Now, when it comes to optimization, and again, we'll be going through this in a couple of weeks' time in the next webinar, um, where we'll be telling you how we can actually optimize towards our imported conversions with smart bidding. But I guess the crux of that conversation will really be about which of these conversion actions we can actually look to optimize towards. And in general, when we think about which action it needs to be, we really need to look at what is the conversion action that is furthest down our measurement funnel here that is driving the most amount of value for our business while also keeping in mind a couple of the most important principles of smart bidding which is data freshness so is the click to conversion time actually happening within a 21 day period if not that's okay we can actually move further up the funnel and i'm going to be showing you how you can actually look to do that for your own business in a couple of minutes time um, but also making sure that your volume of conversions exceeds the minimum threshold for any given um, smart bidding uh, algorithm so for instance the smart bidding strategy might be target return on ad spend um, and that will require over 15 conversions in a 28 day period maximize conversion value one of our newest smart bidding strategies that's going to require over 30 conversions in a 28 day period so that's a couple of things just to bear in mind yeah and um, when, when when you when you go through this for your own business and um, it will be completely bespoke to your to yourself so it's worth kind of sitting down with the rest of the marketing team and just working out okay so what percentage of our leads kind of come through a, a phone call or a form submission um, and then make it to become sales qualified and then finally to the closed deal and, and you'll, you'll find a sweet spot within your own um, personal um, customer journey. Exactly. Okay, so introducing offline conversion tracking. Now, chances are, <laughs> Uh, if you're sitting in your office today attending the Offline Conversion Tracking Academy, you might know what Offline Conversion <laughs> Tracking is, or at least you probably should. But in case you don't, don't worry, we're going to bring you through what that actually is now. So a quick overview of what Offline Conversion Tracking is. Um, it allows us to measure offline conversions or events up to 90 days after the click actually happens. Um, we can then import these events directly into Google Ads. This is what's going to allow us to actually gain a deeper, more granular understanding of how each online click drives offline actions through better reporting. And this is what's going to help us distinguish between clicks and queries that lead to high versus low quality leads. And all of this can actually be leveraged for better bid and budget optimization. So as you can imagine, in terms of budget, we can identify which campaigns are driving the most uh, high quality leads for our business, and therefore we can direct more budget into those uh, campaigns. Or alternatively, if we wish to use smart bidding, we can actually just give these smart bidding strategies higher intense signals with which to optimize towards. Yeah, I think that's a really important point as well, because um, I've seen this in the past with um, 
with companies where they might implement offline conversion tracking and they go back through their query sets and they actually have to import a lot of queries or keywords that maybe they've removed because they weren't driving a high volume of leads, but actually they're driving an awful lot of qualified yeah. qualified leads. So it's it just gives you a whole new perspective on how the account has been performing. And so just keep that in mind whenever you do implement to make sure you go back over maybe things that you've turned off over the past um, 12 to 18 months because with this fresh new piece of data, things might look a little bit different. Exactly. That's actually a great point. Um, now, in terms of how <laughs> this solution actually works, so we're going to give you a quick uh, look under the hood of what is actually happening here as your user is uh, clicking through your ad, passing through your website, um, and then becomes a lead for your business. So let's start off over on the left-hand side of your screen here with step number one. So a user clicks on your ad and arrives on your website. It's at this point that we are able to give them what's called the Google Click ID, which you'll see in blue at the bottom of your screen here. Now the GCLID, as we refer to it as, is simply up to 120 characters alphanumeric, um, which we can actually give them. I know I never yeah. heard of that yeah. before, <laughs> before, but there yeah. it is. Yeah. It means numbers yeah. and letters. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Latin uh, as well. Latin, yeah. yeah, we love that. Um, so what happens here is that Google Ads gives your user the Google Click ID in the browser um, of their within their URL. So as the user is passing on your website, uh, doing all of the research that, that is required about your product or service and making a decision about that, the Google Click ID will stay with them in their browser as they move from page to page. Now what's going to happen is they're going to land on the form of the website. What happens here, Connor? They fill out all the personal information. Absolutely. So same as what they would generally do when they come onto the website. However, in this case, we will have made a small change to your web form, uh, which creates a hidden field on the web form. Now, the user won't actually see this hidden field, but what's happening here is the hidden field is pulling the Google Click ID from the user's browser into that hidden field so that when the user clicks submit, all of the personal information that you've required in the lead form, along with <coughs> Google Click ID, gets transferred into the CRM system. Now, once it is in the CRM system, it will appear as if it would have appeared um, up to now uh, without the Google Click ID. But in this case, we have now given your CRM system the ability and capacity to actually store the Google Click ID along with all of the leads personal information in the CRM. So now it's up to your sales team to work the lead, uh, sell to the lead and convert them into a loyal customer. Um, now, after changing the lead status, once the sales team has moved them from a prospect over to a client or a closed deal, we can actually extract all of these closed deals or all of the qualified leads or whatever the action that we want to import back into Google Ads might be, extract this information into an online file and pass it back into Google Ads via the import tool. Yeah, now at this point you might be thinking, well, we're actually already collecting our Google Click IDs in the CRM, so can we just upload them straight away? But unfortunately you can't do that because there are a couple of steps that we need to do before we can upload them. We need to create a conversion action, and then we need to assign that conversion action alongside the Google Click ID before it's uploaded. So just to bear that in mind that there are a couple of steps we can do, um, we need to do before we can import the conversions. Absolutely, so before we move any further, now, I know you're probably all chomping at the bit to get going. A few of you have probably <laughs> got off the line and started yeah, yeah, yeah. already. That's all right. We allow, Google Click ID is flying all over yeah, the place. Yeah, yeah, we're going to allow that. Now, just to make sure that everybody's on the same page in terms of what a powerful tool that this actually is and the value that it can actually add to your business, I just want to give you a quick insight here into a business that we've worked with in the past called Get Ninjas. Um, so this is a case study all the way from Brazil. Now Get Ninjas are a service marketplace. Um, so helping connect users to professionals, everything from builders to uh, physiotherapists. So with this in mind, Get Ninjas wanted to increase the overall number of matched services. So they noticed that some of these services weren't being matched or some of the requests from users weren't being matched with the service people themselves. Um, so what they have done here is they have started leveraging offline conversion tracking, started importing the services that actually got matched 
um, instead of the ones that didn't get matched. And by leveraging smart bidding here, they were actually able to increase their overall profit by 51%. They were also able to lower their CBA by 23%. And I think most importantly here, and something that kind of calls back to what I was stating at the start of this live stream, is that their conversion volume didn't actually have to be negatively impacted here. So even though that they were increasing the value of the leads that they were getting through their platform, they were also able to increase the volume of their conversions by 36% which is, I mean, all of these are fantastic numbers to Sounds see. pretty good to me, doesn't it? Sounds pretty good. Will we, will yeah. we get on with it? Yeah. Excellent. Um, okay, so before we start the implementation process, there are a couple of things that we want you to bear in mind. Now, first of all, and this is something that I always see time and time again, you need to have auto tagging enabled within Google Ads. I'm gonna show you a quick demo of how to do that, but this is one of the most common errors that I see. And if you don't have auto tagging enabled within your Google Ads account, what happens is Google Ads is not actually able to deliver the Google Click ID into the user's browser, which I've already showed you. So this is the feature that allows you to do that. Now, next up, you need to make sure that all of the key stakeholders in your business are aligned. Now, in terms of key stakeholders, we see, we, we've we identified three and we've already communicated to you in uh, emails up to now who needs to be involved, but just in case you've missed that, who we're talking about here is the marketing manager. So whoever's taking care of the day-to-day -day management of the Google Ads in your business. We also need the web developer um, because we are going to be making some very small tweaks to the website's code in terms of adding a small lightweight piece of JavaScript um, as well as making that critical change to the lead form to add the hidden field as well as the CRM administrator because again we just need to make a quick adjustment to the CRM system to be able to add the Google Click ID along with all of the lead details and store it within the CRM system. So if you are sitting there in the room looking at this live stream and you're looking around you and you are the marketing manager and you're not seeing a web developer and you're not seeing the CRM administrator, what I would do is I would go ahead and click pause, go out, run around, grab them, pull them back into the room and watch yeah. the rest of this live stream together. Alternatively, uh, you could just let them get on with whatever they're doing and wait for the recording of this yeah. live stream to come out and then share it with them. It's up to you. Either way, it is absolutely critical that the marketing manager, the Google Ads manager, yeah. I should say, uh, the CRM administrator and the web developer are all involved in this process from the start and aligned on what needs to happen. Yeah, I'm going to make the next 20 minutes of this video are going to be the most important for them. So it's probably the best use of their time just to join now. Absolutely. Cool. Um, also, what you need to bear in mind here is that we do need a lead management tool or CRM that can actually store the Google Click ID. As I said, this Google Click ID is up to 120 characters. Now, in the vast majority of cases, CRMs are able to manage and store um, up to 120 characters in a single field. However, in maybe 1% of cases, I've seen that some CRMs are not able to hold this many characters in a single field. And this is gonna be a problem because if, for instance, your CRM is only able to hold 80 characters in a field and the Google Click ID is 120 characters, that means that it's actually gonna truncate the Google Click ID down to 80 characters and it's not going to be the same Google Click ID that was delivered to the user and therefore this is gonna create an error when you try to import it back into Google Ads. So please bear that in mind when you, before you actually set up, ask the question to the CRM administrator, is our CRM or our lead management tool or our database able to hold up to 120 characters in this field? Alphanumeric. Alphanumeric, thank you for saying that, that was a test. <laughs> Cheers. Um, now finally, the click conversion cycle needs to be less than 90 days. Now, why does it need to be less than 90 days? Because our favorite Google Click ID expires after this 90-day period, meaning that it will no longer exist. Now, does this mean that if you are an enterprise software solution and your sales cycle on average is a six-month to nine-month sales cycle that you won't be able to use uh, offline conversion tracking? No, you just need to find Another point within the buying process that makes sense for your business. Couldn't have said it better myself. 
but I could show you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So if this is the case for your business, if your sales cycle is on average taking over 90 days, like my company here, www.davescompany.com. Uh, yeah. yeah, you like that. Yeah. Um, so this is my company. On average, I noticed that my sales cycle in total is, um, I believe it's over four months, but what I want to show you here is what my lead funnel or my sales funnel on this website actually look, look, looks like. Um, and this will give you an idea of how to identify, as Connor says, the conversion actions that are most important to your business that are happening offline that we could be importing that will actually give us higher intense signals than just the, the average lead form that we're already tracking with online conversion tracking. Okay, so davescompany.com, what happens here is a user clicks on an ad, lands on the landing page, and then they actually fill out a form for request a quote. Then I actually get back to that user, qualify the lead, and provide that user with a quote. Now at this point, I know that they're actually a good lead. Um, because they've gone ahead and requested a quote, and because I can tell that they're a good lead, I know that this means that they actually have higher intent than just all of the other average people who have actually landed on the website or who have simply just requested a quote. Now, after a few days, what will happen here is this quote will actually go to quote accepted um, on the user site. So they accept the quote and then eventually we get to deal close. Now, as you can see in the left hand side here, all as the user is going down through this sales funnel, um, there is an increasing amount of user intent. So any of these conversion actions um, that we see going downwards, all of them as we, as we get down towards the bottom um, are going to give our smart bidding strategy more intense signals or even higher quality intense signals with which to optimize towards. And therefore this is what's going to ultimately increase the value of our future leads. So that is just in a nutshell what we're trying to achieve. Now let's talk about timelines because I know that it takes five minutes for a user to request a quote from the time that they've actually landed on the, our landing page. It can take up to two days for me to actually get back to that user uh, to qualify the lead and to provide them with a quote. And then it takes up to 14 days for that quote to actually be accepted by the user. Now, once it's accepted, it's pretty much as good as done. I can tell you that the conversion rate from here is very, very high um, from quote accepted to deal closed. So potentially this is also something that's actually worth importing and not just the deal closed. Now, when I look at how long it takes to get a deal across the line in my business, it actually takes four months. It's not good. It's not good. No. It's not, well, it's, sorry, it's, well, it's not that it's not good, but for offline conversion yeah. tracking, it's not good. No. It, it just won't work. Um, and the reason it won't work, because the cookie will expire. Exactly, the Google Click ID will expire after that 90 day period. In this case, we have four months. Now, because we have four months, that means this deal closed won't be able to be eligible for importing back into Google Ads. However, what we need to do here is actually look further up our sales funnel here into quote accepted into the likes of qualified lead and see if any of these will be eligible for importing. In the cases of qualifying the lead and providing the quote, this is only taking two days. This is a very short turnaround time and even for quote accepted, it's only two weeks. So again, very short sales cycle here or uh, click to conversion uh, time here for uh, these two types of conversion actions, two days and 14 days. As I said previously, the key thing with, uh, uh, with smart bidding is the fresher the data um, and the more volume that we have, the better our smart bidding strategy will work. So best practices dictate that we have roughly around 21 days um, from first click to conversion um, before or, or in order for smart bidding to be as efficient as possible. After this 21 day period, we would advise you to actually look at what, like we can still report on that conversion without a doubt, but we would advise you to look at another conversion action with which to optimize towards. So what we're seeing here ultimately with davescompany.com, deal close, no dice. This won't work with four months, the GCLID will expire. However, qualified lead and um, provided a quote, 
as well as quote accepted is happening within two days and 14 days. These are perfect for importing back into Google Ads and optimizing towards these with smart bidding. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. Excellent. Let's kick on. Actually, before we do, just wanted to point out that the top, um, so our top ones here, so we can actually already track with online conversion tracking, the likes of landing on the landing page or um, requesting a quote. And then, as I've just mentioned, with qualifying the lead and providing the quote and with quote accepted, we can track these with offline conversion tracking, but we can't track deal close. Yeah, I suppose it's worth mentioning there as well. Is like there's no, there's absolutely no harm in uploading both the qualify lead and provide and, and provide quotes and the quote accepted and have two separate conversion actions. And then that will allow you to understand, okay, what is the percentage, um, what are, what is the percentage of the leads that go through qualification to exception as well? Absolutely, I think that's a great point. So, if for instance, I mean, like we we should be importing, um, well, we should be tracking and importing everything that matters to our business in terms yep. of driving revenue for our business. So anything that is fur furthest down uh, the sales funnel that we have here, we should try and be importing it up until 90 days. Yep. Because after that 90 yep. days, of course, we can't yep. actually import these. So there is absolutely no harm in importing more than one or however many um, actions make sense to your business in order to identify what is driving quote accepts, what is driving qualified leads. Um, and with that type of reporting data, we can understand uh, budget allocation decisions as opposed to just optimizing towards one um, yeah. with SmartBank. Absolutely, and just on a technical note, you'll be uploading the same Google Click ID for both, um, but it will just be a different conversion name, and that's how you upload both on the same click. Exactly. Great, and then one other thing I've already mentioned, uh, auto-tagging and, and the fact that this needs to be enabled at an account level. So what happens is you click on settings, account settings, and then just make sure that you click on auto-tagging um, and select that as yes. And again, this is what's going to allow uh, Google to enable the Google Click ID um, and deliver that to a user's browser where it can be captured into a cookie on your website. Um, so that is really imperative to actually uh, enabling uh, offline conversion tracking for your business. Absolutely. Okay, so here we have the pathway to a successful implementation for offline conversion tracking. So up to now, we've been talking about why offline conversion tracking is important. We've been talking about what offline conversion tracking is, and now we're gonna be telling you how you can actually implement it for your business. So we've broken this out into three different stages. So there is the collect stage, the import stage, and the optimize stage. For the context of this live stream, we are only gonna be focusing on collect and import. And for the optimize section, we will actually be running through this um, for all of the teams that make it to the end of this uh, initiative of the Offline Conversion Tracking Academy. Uh, everybody who ultimately starts importing conversions, you will receive an invitation to a future webinar to show you how you can actually optimize uh, towards offline conversions on your Google Ads yeah. accounts. Because we have loads of different avenues for, for, for optimizing, but as we were saying earlier, you know, once you do get the new pieces of information in the account, um, it does open a, a load more doors on, on, on how you can optimize across the account. So definitely do try and get it done within the 10 days so we can get um, so you can get into that optimized session because there's, there's loads of great content in that. Absolutely. However, if, what I would say as well, I'm just gonna back up here, I, I actually think that this is probably the most important slide that we're going to oh, yeah. present here. And even for the context of the Offline Conversion Tracking Academy and getting your team all aligned on everything, what I would actually recommend doing is just taking a quick screenshot of this. So we'll even send it around um, in the launch comms that are going to be coming around later. And what I would make sure to do is just like even print this off, put this off on, up on your desk or email it around to uh, everybody who's gonna be involved in the implementation on your team um, because these are the nine critical steps that you're gonna be taking in order to go from creating a conversion action all the way to bidding to a, this conversion, uh, this imported conversion and starting to optimize towards it. So each of these steps are highly critical and we're gonna be going through them in a lot more detail over the next 15 to 20 minutes, I would say. Um, 
So with that, we'll kick off with the collect uh, stage of offline conversion tracking. Um, so within the collect stage, I did mention we're going to need a couple of other stakeholders uh, in, in order to assist with the implementation here. So for collect, we're going to need Google Ads Manager, a web developer, as well as a CRM administrator. Now, in this case, the collect stage is going to be all, around, all about uh, collecting, I guess, all of the necessary data that we need in order to get ready for importing it back into Google Ads. Um, so how do we actually collect all of this necessary data? Well, we have four key steps here in order to prepare the data. Step one is creating a new conversion action in Google Ads. This is the same as we would create any regular conversion action in Google Ads. However, I will be showing you a couple of uh, insights into how to do this slightly differently uh, for offline conversion tracking, just a couple of things to bear in mind there so we don't do it wrong. Uh, this will generally be done by a Google Ads account manager. Just important to note there as well, whenever you're creating that conversion action, just make it sure it's informative for whoever's going to be running the PPC potentially in the future. So, you know, if it's going to be qualified form fills or qualified phone leads, just make sure that you do name it something that can be understood for f future reference. Yeah. That's an excellent point. In step two, we're going to be talking about how we can actually modify the lead form. And by modifying the lead form, we simply mean adding that hidden form field that the user won't see, um, but that this form field will actually be used to capture the Google Click ID um, and hold it until the user clicks submit, and we can transfer that into the CRM system. Now, in terms of stakeholders that are required here, we're going to need the CRM administrator and the web developer uh, to be on point for step two. Now, once the user has clicked submit, this is when it, our Google Click ID gets transferred into the CRM uh, or into the uh, database or the uh, lead management tool that your company is using. In order for it to be held and stored here, we are going to need to modify the CRM backend. And this is exactly what step three is. Um, so modifying that CRM to add an additional field for the Google Click ID, which you are going to title uh, Google Click ID. And again, just uh, to call out that this is 120 characters. Numeric. Alpha, 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 alpha numeric. Nearly, yeah. almost, almost. Uh, and this, <laughs> this is currently done by the CRM administrator. Um, and then finally, step four, which is our last step for the collect stage. And this is where we are going to need to implement the JavaScript um, at a site-wide level on your website. And the reason why this is a site-wide level is because like any lead gen website, uh, there is a high chance that there might be a lot of information on different pages about the product or service that you are selling. And therefore, there's a high chance that the user is going to be moving across different pages as they're researching and considering your product or service. So we implement this at a site-wide level to ensure that the Google Click ID follows the user on every page that they are researching um, your product or service on. Um, to call out as well, this can actually also be implemented with Google Tag Manager. Um, and the reason why we implement this tag is because this tag is what's going to capture and store Google Click ID in the uh, user's browser so that they, when they come to the lead form, uh, which we have modified in step two, they will actually we will be able to push the Google Click ID into the hidden field that you've created um, so that when they click submit, it gets transmitted into the CRM system in step three. It's Excellent. All, it's all starting to, it's all starting to come together. Come together. Yeah. Now. Okay. Alpha new stuff. Uh, for that last one as well, <laughs> we're going to need the web developer um, for step four. So in this collect stage, we're using all three stakeholders. So the Google Ads account manager, the CRM administrator, and also the web developer, all working in tandem to prepare the data for import, which we'll get on to in the next stage. Is it a good time to mention that none of this information is personally identifiable? Yes, it is very good. So as we said in step two, what we're gonna do here is create that hidden field to capture the G click. Once the user clicks submit, that gets sent into the uh, CRM uh, backend. Now, when it comes to importation, which we'll get on to 
um, in the next stage of import, uh, we won't actually be taking any PII or personal identifiable information from your CRM system in order to import that into Google Ads. So the only data that we will actually uh, extract from the CRM system is the Google Click ID, which is uh, Google data, along with the name of the conversion action that you've created in step one, along with the timestamp of the final conversion. So in davescompany.com, that would have been a closed deal or it would have been a qualified lead. Um, so we don't actually take any uh, user information from the CRM system in order to enable offline conversion tracking. I think it's such an important point because it is easy, you know, it's, you don't, you know, it can become a, a sensitive topic when we're talking about taking information from the CRM, but none of it is personally identifiable, which, is, which is really important. I think it's a great point, and actually, it's a lot of a lot of companies that I've worked with, especially finance companies, yeah. who are heavily regulated in terms of this area yeah. um, and how they actually use user data. Um, so, just to kind of uh, set uh, set you at ease here. Uh, no personal identifiable information will actually be imported back into uh, Google Ads. So that stays within your CRM system. So we, we never actually use that for offline conversion tracking. So great call. Um, so let's d dive a little bit deeper into each of these stages. So staying within the collect, um, and we're looking at step one. So creating a conversion action. Now, as I promise you, we're going to show you a couple of little nuances here that you're going to have to consider when you're creating a new conversion action for OCT. So you can create this at an MCC level or a manager account level. You don't have to. You can also create this at a managed account level or at a child account within an MCC. Um, so whatever level of account of Google Ads account makes sense for your business, you can create a new OCT conversion action in. Now, when you are creating this new conversion action, it is very important that you select import uh, when it says conversion type and that you set the attribution window to 90 days. Connor, why is it important to set the attribution window to 90 days? Because the Google Click ID will only live for 90 days. It'll only live for 90 days. Thank you, Connor. So initially, what I would say as well is that you do not want to add this conversion action to the conversions column. If we add it to the conversions column, it means that it is eligible to be optimized towards using smart bidding straight away. We don't want that just yet. We want to make sure that when we set this up and start importing conversions that we are simply just reporting on it for one to two weeks until we get comfortable with the data that we're seeing coming through in our account, um, we become familiar with it, and then we can make a decision as to whether uh, or what we should optimize towards within the Google Ads account. Now, also, I want to point out here that when we are setting up the conversion, you can see on your screen, it asks us what we would like to import from. So we have the options here to import from Google Analytics, from Firebase, from a third-party app analytics, from Salesforce, as well as other data sources or CRMs. Now, in this case, you will be selecting track conversions from clicks, and then you select continue. And that's how you set up your step one or your uh, creating a conversion action within Google Ads for OCT. Now, crucially, at this point, if you were to track conversions from clicks, the key piece of data is the Google Click ID. If you're importing um, conversions from calls, the key piece of information is going to be the number that the caller rang from. Exactly. So this could be, for instance, the Google forwarding number, or this could alternatively be the number um, that you have got from your third party call service. Yeah. So just to bear that in mind whenever you're looking up those. So it will have to be a separate conversion action for clicks and for calls will be two separate conversion actions. Exactly. And again, this is mostly done by, or entirely done, I should say, by the Google Ads account manager. Now, step two, this is where we get a little bit more technical and we're going to have to call in some backup from our web developer as well as our CRM administrator. So what is happening here is we're going to modify the lead form um, and within the lead form, we're going to create a hidden field. And this hidden field is going to call the Google Click ID from the user's browser and actually hold and store it until the user actually clicks submit. Um, so what happens here is in step four, which we'll be coming on to uh, where we are implementing the JavaScript on the website, that is going to hold the Google Click ID in the user's browser. And then again, we're going to be pulling the Google Click ID from the browser 
into the hidden form until the user clicks submit and then it gets transferred into the CRM system. Now, any of you who have um, recently jumped out of the office and, and grabbed the web developer or the CRM um, administrator, let them know that there are tag tagging specialists on hand to answer any questions. Yeah. So there's the, the link below the video. Um, so you can ask any questions that you might have um, based on that, based on a, on, on a certain website type you might have or, or any kind of technical specification questions. And um, they're, they're on hand to answer any questions that you have now. Exactly. Um, and also good call out, I would look through the resources that we will be sharing after this live stream. Um, there's going to be a document in that that brings you through the entire process step by step. That document, as well as the Google Ads Help Center, if you want to just Google that, and we're going to uh, put a link for that in the email as well. Um, but they all show the specific code changes that need to happen both JavaScript as well as the code changes for your lead form in order to make this modification, create the hidden field, and then help that hidden field uh, communicate with the, the JavaScript to make sure that it's pulling uh, that Google Click ID in at the right time. Um, so all of that is on its way to you, and make sure that you're using those resources as well as the technical support that uh, Connor just spoke about. So step three, we're getting uh, close to the yeah. end of Connect now. Um, so this is going to be exclusively in the hands of our CRM administrator. And the reason for that is that within this step, we are going to be modifying the CRM backend in order to capture the Google Click ID along with the rest of uh, the leads details. Now, uh, this is important because what's going to happen here is we're going to query this database or this CRM um, system at a later date when the when your sales team has closed the lead um, or has qualified the lead, depending on what the conversion action that we want to uh, import. And we will be extracting the Google Click ID uh, along with the value, if we wish to use target return on ad spend, along with the conversion action name, which could be named after the stage which uh, we're at here, as well as the timestamp. Um, now, I'll be talking about the timestamp in a little bit more detail uh, later on, but if your CRM or database currently doesn't have a timestamp of when the stage gets changed in the CRM system, so for instance, when the stage goes from contacted to closed um, or qualified to close, then it's important that your CRM administrator is actually making that change or that modification to the CRM system because the timestamp is one of the three mandatory um, criteria or mandatory elements that we actually need to start importing back into Google Ads. Absolutely, and I think that um, the value, although the value isn't mandatory, um, it can be really important in some aspects. And it's really important for companies that would have a large uh, variation between the value of certain leads. So if you have leads that are coming in, you know, 10x the other, uh, you know, 10 times other leads, you might want to put a value on them because you want to be able to see, okay, which keywords are driving the most value for the business as opposed to just potentially the higher intent or the higher, uh, yeah, the higher intent leads. So yeah, the value can be important, but just, so just make sure you are looking into that. Absolutely. So step four, the final step of the collect stage. Now this is again where the web developer is needed because the web developer um, is required here to actually install that JavaScript at a site-wide level on your website. Um, now, quick description of what this JavaScript actually does on the website. So it captures the Google Click ID when the user arrives on the website, and then it stores the value to be retrieved later, and it also inserts this Google Click ID value into the hidden field that the web developer has created in step two. So step two and step four working in tandem together um, in order to pass the Google Click ID at the right time um, before it gets transferred into your CRM system. Yeah, and I would say just make sure it goes into the top of the page so that it, it loads for every, for every user. Absolutely. So this is also a critical one here that the web developer will have to keep in mind. And I mentioned this in step two, but you need to update this script so that it can identify the ID of the hidden Google Click ID field on the on the website's form that was created in step two. Um, and then again, this needs to be implemented across every single page on the website to make sure that there are no gaps here or to make sure that the Google Click ID isn't lost at any point where the user is um, browsing across your website. 
So that is all four steps within the collect stage. Um, again, if you have any questions at this point, there should be a small box yep. below below the screen um, <laughs> um, and feel free to pop any questions in there and we're going to get back to those um, either afterwards or we will actually have someone yeah. on hand. But, but now, but at this point, it's quite exciting that we've gone through all the stages to collect all the information that's necessary to understand what's driving value for the business at a keyword level. And I think that's a really important time just to take a step, take a breath and just think, well, now, we, now we've done those steps, mm. now how are we going to import this information? And however you import it is going to be is yeah. going to be unique to your own business what depending on what your own needs are whether it's going to be on a on a more manual basis or on an api level yeah yeah absolutely and i'd also be willing to wager um having looked at that at those four four steps within the collect stage now like what raf is showing you is essentially 50 percent of uh, the workload of this entire initiative chances are your business is probably might be already capturing the Google Click ID. You might already have um, some of this development actually done. So you're probably actually already ahead. Now, for any web developer or CRM administrator, or even the uh, Google Ads manager, I mean, this work can be done actually pretty quickly. Do remember that this is a time trial. Um, so it's fast as fingers first, yeah. pretty much. And you Chris have this um, in order to implement this entire process. Um, and you might agree that it actually isn't that difficult. So I would suggest to get on this immediately after this live stream, if possible, and ensure that you are giving all of the information and updating your um, account manager within Google with how far you've got in the process. Yeah, and I think for, for a lot of lead gen businesses, this is a really important time of year to do it. So um, for a lot of you, um, your peak season will be coming in January, February, March. Um, and so getting this information imported now at this stage, um, having it in the system, understanding the value, understanding where it's driving value across the uh, across the account will set you up in great stead um, come January and February. So the quicker we get it done now, the more we can understand about how it's performing and then the more, the, the better decisions we can make in January. And that's really why we're, we're doing this now. Absolutely. So we've just brought you through collect. Next stage is on to import. So if we have gathered up all of the data that's required for offline conversion tracking. Now we're going to show you how you get that data back into Google Ads so you can prepare yourself to optimize uh, on that data. So within the import stage, again, it's all about choosing how you want to import the conversions. And to help you to do this, we have four different uh, types of import uh, that you can leverage to import the data from the CRM um, or from an online file directly into Google Ads. Each of these stages ranges from being more manual to more automated. So again, depending on how your business wishes to operate, uh, you can decide which one is the right one for you. However, before we get onto that, so one thing that is important to call out at this point is just the sheer volume of CRM systems that are out there. Like Connor, how many? How many CRM systems? Thousands. And also you can't spell important without imports. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Um, so given the the sheer number of different CRM systems that are out there, do not worry, okay? So whether your company is using a cloud-based solution or whether you have a custom in-house uh, bespoke built CRM if you're uh, using software. Um, Google whatever. Sheets or Excel, Excel whatever, whatever doesn't matter. it is, it doesn't really matter. As long as you can actually pull that Google Fake ID um, and then extract the relevant data from that and pass it back into Google Ads, we're golden. However, I do want to call out that if you do have Salesforce Sales Cloud as your business's CRM system, then you are in luck because there is actually a direct integration between the Google Ads front end and Salesforce Sales Cloud that does allow you to automate um, the extraction of the relevant data from the CRM to uh, Google Ads. Now, if you do not have Salesforce Sales Cloud, don't worry, uh, because we're gonna be showing you how to extract and format the conversion data before we get to the import section. So this is step five. So I wanna quickly bring you through what your sales team might be looking at in terms of the CRM system, um, and then how do we actually align the, uh, the CRM system, currently how it's built, with extracting that uh, back into a online file, um, or a CSV file, or as Connor says, Google Sheets, or 
uh, Excel or whatever it might be so that we can eventually import it into Google Ads. So imagine Dave's uh, company.com and we have our CRM, Acme CRM here and the sales team is looking at this view of the CRM. So you can imagine a new, new deal comes in here, lead number two is the name. Um, so a new lead comes in, um, I call them qualify that lead. So I move the stage to stage qualified or lead qualified. Um, and then hopefully I get lucky and the deal actually closes and I can input the value here. Now in this case, because it, like in this example, um, these deal close is happening in a very short amount of time. So less than 90 days when I've actually decided that I want to import uh, deal close as my conversion action. What I need to do is extract all of the relevant data from here back into a online file to later import. So this is where I need to work with the IT team in order to query this database or this CRM system on a daily basis. And that daily is important there because if you wish to use smart bidding in the future, you will need to have a regular scheduled upload within Google Ads in order to keep the data fresh. Or indeed more than daily. So as many times as you see fit. So if you've plenty of leads coming through, there's no reason why you couldn't do it once at the beginning of the day and once at the end of the day, there's no reason why you can't do that. That's a great point. So at least once a day. Yeah. Um, so we're going to extract all of the relevant data here um, from my CRM system into a Google Sheets file in this example. So the IT team has queried the CRM um, and they've pulled it into this format. Now this format is actually available on the Google Ads front end, you can download it in any file type that you wish, I think in Excel, uh, CSV, as well as uh, Google Sheets. So this gives you a quick uh, view on all of the relevant information that is needed. So my team has pulled the Google Click ID, um, as well as the conversion name, as well as the conversion timestamp, which I'll talk to you in a minute, and the conversion value, because I want to use target return on ad spend as the bidding strategy in the future. Um, so that's step five, and that's really just the case of if we are not using uh, Salesforce Sales Cloud, we will need to extract all of the relevant information from the CRM into a file. And in the next step now, we're gonna talk about how we actually get that file to import back into Google Ads. So this is step six. Now we have four different types of import here. Um, so you're only going to have to select one and each of these uh, import types actually range from being more manual to more automated. So we're going to start off with manual upload, which is the most manual uh, type of upload method. Um, and this involves uploading that CSV file or Excel or the Google Sheets that I've just shown you directly into Google Ads via the Google Ads user interface. Now. This is great, I mean, it, like, it allows you to do it almost instantaneously, um, same as the rest of them. However, what I would say in this is like, there's a sustainability factor here that we do need to consider. So if you are going to be using smart bidding in the future, you're gonna to have to bear in mind, just like Connor said, you're gonna to have to do it at least once per day, potentially more, depending on how many leads your business is getting in. So if you're gonna be using manual upload, you have to think to yourself, do we have a process in place or a system whereby uh, we can appoint someone with the, the um, I guess, the task of importing this on a daily basis or twice per day manually? Uh, now, if the answer is yes, that's fine. You'll be able to use it. If the answer is no, then I would actually urge you to consider uh, the next type of import that we have here, which is scheduled upload. Now, within scheduled upload, it's much the same as manual upload. However, Within this, we're able to actually link our Google Ads account with a Google Sheets or with um, a web server via a HTTPS or a secure file transfer protocol. And we're able to pull from those files um, at any frequency which we like. So it could be once a day, um, so on and so forth. Um, so again, I feel that scheduled upload does allow businesses a lot more, um, I guess, Consistency yeah, and, and even flexibility as well because you can change it, you can update it, and you can you can change the amount of time or how often it's been uploaded. Um, so it definitely does afford you that, that 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 flexibility and consistency. Yes. Now, 
if we kind of want to get a little bit more technical with our import and kind of also a lot more automated as well so we can actually look at using api upload now if your business is familiar with using the google ads api potentially this is a good fit uh, for you alternatively if you use um, a third-party api or your own api um, for different uh, tasks then um, you will have to actually look at how to set this up yourself. We do actually have a lot of really good documentation on how to do it with the Google Ads API. And as Connor said at the start, if you do run into technical issues with leveraging the Google Ads API, I would urge you to get in touch with your Google Ads account manager and we can make sure to route you to a team which can actually help with the technical troubleshooting for the API upload. Yeah, so that can work both ways. Either you could have a specific question that we email to the team on your behalf, um, or if there's something more specific that you want to kind of talk through um, with a Google developer, we can we can, we can can get you on a, on a video call with them as well. Yes, and finally, once we move past the API upload um, into what I would say is one of the most uh, or more automated forms of import here, and that is the CRM integration that we currently have with uh, Salesforce Sales Cloud. Um, so again, if you're using Salesforce Sales Cloud, it kind of negates the need for step five. You don't actually have to extract the data into a different file before you import it. You can just link the two accounts in the same way as you would link your Google Ads account with your Google Analytics account. You can do it with the Salesforce account um, and you can have that pulling on a regular schedule um, all of the relevant data that you that is required for offline conversion tracking. Um, now, there are a couple of other um, integrations that are also happening. So there is also an integration, not on the uh, Google Ads side, but on the CRM side with Marketo CRM or also Sugar CRM. So if you happen to be using either, Sweet. <laughs> if you happen to be using either of those CRM systems, um, you can investigate the integration within those uh, user interfaces on either uh, Sugar or Marketo. Um, so. Now we've kind of talked about the different types of import that we have. What we're going to take a look at now is how you actually prepare your data uh, for the upload itself. So I've already shown you an example of what the template actually looks like. Within this template, you'll see a number of different fields. Important to call out here, only three of these fields are mandatory. However, one is definitely required depending on what type of smart bidding you would wish to optimize with in the future so firstly let's look at the mandatory fields of course we've been talking about it all along it's enabled by auto tagging that is the google click id um, so this is the first field that we will need to be putting in um, within the the footer within the field uh, of the uh, file um, then also we have the conversion name um, so the conversion name is the conversion which we created back in step one of the collect stage um, and this is what ultimately links along with the google click id uh, the data uh, within the crm system back to google ads and then finally and very importantly is the conversion time now when we talk about conversion time we do not mean the time of the click conversion that came from Google Ads, so the time that the lead form was filled out. This conversion time means the time that the lead was qualified or the deal was closed or whatever that offline action was um, that we wish to actually start importing. Um, so it's important that there is a time difference between that initial uh, click conversion um, and the final offline conversion, um, which will be reflected in this conversion time. Now, when we get into the optional fields, again, if we wish to use target return on ad spend in the future, or even, um, I think Connor mentioned, it's good for just like reporting yeah. purposes, if we understand the value of uh, the conversions that are taking place offline, we need to actually import those back into Google Ads. So we can do that. Um, using this column here. And then finally, we have conversion uh, currency uh, if that's required by your business. Very uh, important to call out here as well um, is the time zone parameters. So just ensure that uh, you take a look and make sure that you have the right time zone um, and that the time zone is actually reflected in the correct format. Um, for 
any of like uh, questions about the format, feel free to uh, put your question in the Q&A box below the screen, or alternatively, take a look at the Google Ads Help Center, which actually has a full page on the different types of format in the different types of formatting that is uh, usable here. Yeah. So for the, for the majority of people who will be watching this video this morning, um, it's going to be GMT plus one um, um, for, for everyone. Yeah. Cool, so things to consider about the conversion time. Now, I've already talked um, about a lot of this. The conversion time is not the time of the click, it's the time of the offline conversion. Um, and the thing that I wanna call out as being kind of most important here is the date and time formatting that we can use. So over on the right-hand side here, you can see that there are a number of different uh, formats that we uh, can leverage here. Um, unfortunately, these, like for the most part, are uh, US. Uh, or American type formats, um, so they're not really native to uh, the UK or the European. So just be very careful of um, the type of formatting that you use here with your date and time because from what I've seen in the past, and I'm sure Connor's the same, it's actually one of the biggest source of import errors that we see. So like if you uh, start to import the incorrect time, um, or if, for instance, if the, the format of that time is wrong, um, you can probably expect to see an error like you're in the in the bottom left hand corner of your screen here. Yeah. Um, so just make sure that you get that one right to avoid any kind of painstaking uh, troubleshooting later on. And the the difference in the format can be as minute as a colon and semicolon or a dash. They have to be prescriptive to what exactly is in the format there. If it's a colon, it has to be a colon. Yeah, spot on. Now, in terms of setting up the upload, I think just very quickly within the interface, a lot of you may already know this, but I think it's worth mentioning, uh, the easiest way to find it is simply just search for uploads in the search bar on the user interface of the Google Ads account, um, and you'll find conversion uploads, just like in the example screenshot that you see on your page. So once you uh, click on that, um, you will be brought through to this view here, which is the upload section of the conversion section within Google Ads. Now, one thing to call out is that if you are uploading from Google Sheets and you wish to create a manual upload here, um, you do actually have to link the Google Sheets with the dynamic email address um, in the same way as if you were sharing it with one of your colleagues in work, you have to share the Google Sheets with their email address. Um, the same goes for Google Ads. So whatever the email that is being shown within your Google Ads account, within the UI, um, you just need to share that with um, the Google Sheets um, and then you can click preview. Um, and I would definitely, definitely advise always check out preview before you actually click apply because there can be um, some easy to fix errors um, that uh, need some looking at there before you actually apply and start importing. Absolutely, so this is a great example now of how you can use your tag team specialist below. So if for example, you upload for the first time and you see 50 or 60% errors, um, you, can, you have your own personal contact um, tagging specialist who you can then contact and show all the errors that you might have um, within the preview, and they'll be able to troubleshoot um, troubleshoot them with you. Yeah, it's a great call out. So a couple of things to call out here um, in terms of previewing the upload before you actually import. So you can still troubleshoot the errors after you preview and then re-upload your file uh, once you've done with the, the troubleshooting. And then once you have finished with the preview, you can click apply. Now, if you are worried about duplicating your entries here, don't because we don't actually re-upload uh, the same combinations of Google Click ID, the date, time, or conversion uh, name. Um, so to give you an example here, if you had, for instance, a, a user which resulted in two product sales, um, the way we would actually differentiate that is because it would be the same Google Click ID, we would actually require two different date and times. So chances are, um, if the user has bought twice from your business, they may have come through at separate times, and those times actually need to be reflected. And once we have uh, those times reflected in the right way, we can state two different entries. And again, it won't be duplicated, but it's required for your business um, that we would have two separate entries for two different purchases. Perfect.
Okay, so we have just brought you through all of the stages for collecting and importing the offline conversions back into Google Ads. Now, if you complete the con collect and import stages over the next 10 days, you will be given access to the webinar for the optimized section of this initiative. Um, so I wanna give you a quick recap on everything that we have completed thus far on the academy. So we're gonna just start off with step one here. So up to now, the user has clicked on the ad and now your website is eligible to capture and store the Google Click ID. Um, the user then goes to fill out the web form and the hidden field that you've created within the web form is now able to pull the Google Click ID from the browser into the hidden field where it'll be passed on to the CRM system. So. Now that we have the data in the CRM system, your sales rep will be able to receive the lead details along with the Google Click ID, and they'll be able to then work these leads. So they'll be able to qualify or they'll be able to pitch uh, the leads. What is happening now is that the lead status is changed within the CRM system. So as you can imagine, when the sales reps uh, pitch or qualify um, and convert these leads into paying customers, we will be able to reflect that within the CRM system. Um, and then we have to extract all of the necessary details. So for instance, if we want to start importing qualified leads, we import all of the qualified leads, or if we want to start importing closed deals, we have to import all of the closed deals along with the relevant uh, GCLIDs and timestamps back into an online, uh, an online file, or unless we're using a Salesforce Sales Cloud account, um, to get it ready for import. And we've also shown you the different types of import ranging from manual um, to more automated um, to help your business actually import that data into Google Ads to get it ready for optimization. Excellent. Thanks a million, Dave. So we've just completed um, the webinar and now you're fully up to date with what you need to do to implement offline conversion tracking. So that's a really exciting day and an exciting time for your business. You're going to move away from optimizing towards leads, now optimizing towards revenue generation for the business. So you're really going to be able to drive the bottom line at a keyword level, which is really exciting. Later on today, we're going to send you out an information pack, and that will detail all the information that we ran through today. Um, and I'd recommend just sending that around the company just so everyone knows um, what you're up to and, and why you needed to have um, a web developer and CRM administrator in the room together today. Um, along with that, you will have the contact details for your specific and specialized tag team support. Now, with your own, um, with your own person the tag team support to help you, they've been through everything um, to do with offline conversion tracking. And so it's, it's, very, it's very rare that there'll be an error that they can't sort out or can't fix. So do um, reach out to them um, throughout this process whenever you're tagging the site. Um, or um, importing the conversion to make sure you do get in touch with them. Excellent. For anybody who has filled out the live question and answer uh, below the screen there, we're going to be staying online for a few more minutes just to make sure that those are actually answered. Um, and again, can't emphasize enough uh, the importance of reaching out to your technical expert or your tag team uh, specialist at any point over the uh, next 10 days so that you can make sure that you can actually get this implemented uh, correctly. So really good resource yeah. to have on hand. Um, yeah, and, it, and it's very rare that you would have access to um, a personal individual on that team as well, so that's yeah. great. Yeah, absolutely. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap it up there. I've also included a quick short link into the Google Ads Help Center article. That's actually gonna be a really important uh, resource for you just to, uh, whether it's like to see what the, where the JavaScript is um, that you're gonna to need to copy and paste into your website um, or all of the steps uh, that are required in order to implement the um, collect and import. You just can't get enough of those alphanumeric uh, strings of characters. The URLs, yeah, yeah. absolutely. It'll break our GTA. Yeah. Um, but anyway, from me, David. Connor. Thanks very much for joining us uh, this morning. Very best of luck uh, with the implementation and looking forward to yeah. seeing the winners. Good luck. Thanks a million.